Hi everyone, this is Dr. Jyoti Bala. I welcome you all on my YouTube channel. In this session, we will be discussing about a very significant area that is like your opportunities related to study abroad, especially if you are a student researcher from biology background, biotech and bio IT field. As if you are following me on my social networks and on this YouTube channel, then you know that I do have experience from India, Japan and USA and I've also presented my work in Cambridge University, UK. Along with that, our collaborations are with the Canadians and Japanese Institute and team. And quite frequently on my social network and my email, I, I always get queries related to how to approach, how to apply for study abroad, what are the opportunity and how they can apply for the scholarship. So I will be sharing my own journey also and how I have approached for these things and how my students also got these kind of jobs and scholarship from USA, Japan, etc. So let's start the session. So let's see why study abroad is important. Whether you are planning to go at the undergraduate, graduate, master level, PhD or postdoc. See, if you want to enhance your skill set, especially in wet lab and dry lab, we will be focusing in biology and biotech sector and bio IT, but it can apply in different areas also. So if you want to broaden your understanding of your areas and field, then study abroad will give you a better opportunities. You may get a comprehensive understanding of the current state of that field, including the recent advances and also what are the current challenges in those sectors, how people are doing the troubleshooting and new innovation in such areas. Based on your research, you can also identify the areas of your career growth and where you want to proceed with your career path. Study abroad also facilitates collaboration. As I was saying that I have done my postdoctoral research from USA and Japan. So not only I got associated with those international scientists team, but when I was working with them, they were having different international collaboration with France scientists, UK scientists. And when I was working with their team, so I got a chance to present my work with the collaborator. Best part is that I'm in touch with all those scientists and their team and my students are also getting benefited if they are doing certain trainings and projects. So I can recommend all those good students to their lab and they are also taking participation in our joint publication. And these kind of diverse international experience help the student to design more effective and efficient research project by identifying the existing gaps in the knowledge and understanding. Such kind of high quality research and collaboration will also enhance your chance of getting different kind of fundings and also increases the chance of getting good publication. These kind of exposure also develop a critical thinking skills and enhance your ability to apply for further like postdoc and academic positions. And if you are interested in transition into academia to industry, then also these collaborations and experience is going to help you. So let's see which are the best countries where you can apply and get the advanced trainings in terms of your research. Without any doubt, United States itself is a very good country where you can go and do your biological and bio IT research. I was in the University of Louisville, Kentucky and also in the Florida International University. So in my US time period, I have worked on neurological projects and HIV research project and also nanotechnology based project. In terms of advanced training, good funding and good collaborative team, United States would be a great option. And recently our students who have done computer aided drug designing and aptamer project also got scholarship and job in United States. The another country which is also very nice is Canada that also provide you strong research infrastructure and is also known for its excellence in the biomedical research that's make a great option for students interested in such fields the another country which you can consider is germany i have been to heidelberg embl for presenting my cancer related project during my phd time so i have found european country very nice germany is known for a strong research culture and has a large number of research institution and university that you can consider if you are planning to go for biological based research you can also consider UK, which is having strong standing traditional of excellence in the research and has some of the world best university in the field of biology, biomedical, bio IT and biotech research. So you can consider UK also. 
The another country is France. France is also a great option for student interest in biology. The another well-known country is Switzerland, which is having renowned research institutions and university. You can consider Switzerland also. Japan is also a great option. I myself has done two postdoctoral research experience from Hokkaido University and Osaka. The country is safe and it provides you well-known infrastructure in the biological research. The another option could be Australia. I have got my few postdoctoral options from there also. They also have good labs related to biology, biomedical sectors and biotech area. So you can consider Australia also. And the another options could be Singapore and South Korea, which are also doing great in the areas of biomedical, biology and biotech and bio IT sectors. It's completely based on your preference and you can consider many factors like uh, whether your research interest and the lab work is overlapping. So there are different scenarios and criteria based on that. You can pick the country and the lab and the supervisor. I have already made few tutorials how you can pick your PIs and the countries. I request you to watch that tutorial also. So now see what are few of the scholarships you can avail them if you want to go for abroad at undergraduate, master, PhD or postdoc level. So you can try for Fulbright Foreign Student Program that is for United States. The another very well known fellowship is DAT which is related to Germany. The another option could be Commonwealth Scholarship for UK. The another one is Erasmus Mundus Scholarship that is for European countries. Most of these scholarships videos I have already uploaded on my past tutorial. So if you have missed watching those, I request you to watch them where I have discussed what are the eligibility, the benefits and how you can apply for these scholarships. And these are few of the more scholarship options which you can try and look for. So I request you to visit their website and timely apply for these scholarships. Now let's see the eligibility criteria. So depending on the different scholarship, the eligibility criteria could vary. So many of these scholarships are especially for a particular citizenship and nationality. I would suggest you to check the citizenship and first try to aim for those scholarships which are especially for aiming for Indian students. The chances of getting those scholarships will be higher for Indian students. The another is education level. So some scholarships are only available to students at certain level. That is like undergraduate scholarship, master's, PhD and postdoctoral. So depending on your educational qualification and at what stages you are, you can apply for those scholarships. The another is field specific scholarship. So not all these scholarships are available for every sector of the field because these scholarships are sometimes limited to a particular areas of the subject. Then you have to check for the GPA. Some scholarship also requires students to have certain grade point average and you should be having a good academic track record. Then few countries also ask for English proficiency test and score. So you have to provide them TOEFL and IELTS score. Especially if you are going for PhD and postdoctoral level, that time they will ask you to provide work experience also. And whether you need full financial support or partial, that things also you have to check depending on scholarship to scholarship. Because some scholarship are need based and in that scenario, it requires student to demonstrate the financial need in order to be eligible for a particular scholarship. Many times I'm getting these queries, how I got my international experience, my international award and postdoctoral fellowships and how my students are also getting these jobs and scholarships. So let me provide you a efficient and smart roadmap so that you can also avail that for study abroad and for getting your scholarship. So this is a general roadmap. It could vary depending on country to country and at what level you are applying for these scholarships, maybe undergraduate, master, PhD or postdoctoral, but a general roadmap I'm providing here. So always start with researching about which country you want to apply, which universities, PI and program you want to apply. See if it is aligning with your research interest and your past experience and where you want to proceed in your career goal and career path. Check the eligibility criteria for that program and scholarship which you are interested in. If they are matching, then start preparing for the application material, 
arrange the documentations, gather all the required documents for this application such as transcript, test code, your CV and resume, statement of purpose and also letter of recommendation. Once you have arranged everything then apply. Most of these applications are online these days. So go to the university site and scholarship sites and provide these information before the deadlines and submit all these application form and documents. Many of these scholarships and university are going to ask you for interviews after the initial screening and shortlisting. So be prepared for those interviews and tests. Most of the time these interviews will be on the online platform or they are going to ask you to come to the embassy. You sometimes need to provide the language proficiency test or aptitude test. Wait for the results and once you get the acceptance, accept the offer, apply for the visa timely and do all the pre-departure arrangement like for accommodation, travel and other necessary preparation before leaving for your study abroad program. Let's see what are the documentation requirements. Mostly they are going to ask you application form which could vary depending on country and scholarship. Along with that they are going to ask you for the transcript, official transcript which include your educational, institutional, mark sheets and all. Then few countries is going to ask you for test score. So it could be TOEFL, IELTS, GRE, GMAT. You also need to work on your resume and CV. Make sure that it is not a journal CV. Customize that depending on the scholarship and the place where you are going to apply. Try to include all the educational and professional background. I have already made one video where I have shown you how you can make your professional resume and CV. If you have missed watching that video, I request you to watch that and improve your CV. After that, a very important document is your statement of purpose, which is a written statement of outlining your reason for wanting to study abroad and what are your goals for that program and why the committee should consider you. And along with these documentation, you also need to provide a letter of recommendation from academia and professional background. And few students who need financial assistance and support, they also require to submit financial documents such as bank statement, tax return or financial information to demonstrate your ability to cover the cost of the program and also to demonstrate the financial need for the scholarship. Along with this, obviously the passport and visa things also be required. So I hope you have found this information relevant and useful. I know many of you are planning to apply in 2023. If you have any queries, please feel free to reach me. I would be more than happy to guide you. We also run a broad training and program and counseling session. So if someone wants to get a one-on-one -on -one counseling session, they can also contact us. You just need to send your CVs and queries. Don't forget to like and subscribe the channel. Thank you so much.